Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Bull. Today we're talking about development. We're looking at forecasts, we're looking at strategies, and we're looking at update on the development environment. And please welcome my next guest. It's Kermit Baker. He's Chief Economist with AIA, the American Institute of Architects. Kermit, thanks for joining us today. Uh, glad to be with you here, Michael. You know, one of the things that really interested me about talking to you, and it's always interesting to talk to you, Kermit, but one of the things I think is really interesting is your architecture billing index, because it seems like that could be a little bit of a fortune teller. What do you see there? Yeah, no, absolutely. And and let me give just a little background to your listeners, Michael, about what our architecture billings index is. We've been running this for over 20 years now. It's a monthly survey of architecture firms, um, and we ask them about uh, design revenue, kind of how much business they have at their operation, and um, we have uh, um, we, we, we've converted this to a national index um, that's centered around 50. And uh, if that score is 50, it means the design revenue is, is going up, which ultimately means that construction activity is going up. Uh, design activity has about a nine to 12 month lead over construction activity, so it's a really good snapshot as to where the construction industry is headed. Um, our, our July figure is our most recent. Um, uh, the score for July was 51.5, so uh, a, a bit above that uh, 50 threshold that I mentioned. So it does uh, suggest that uh, design activity um, has been increasing. Um, the June number was about 52.5. The May number was about 53. So we've seen good solid numbers. Uh, in our design index, uh, but they have been slowing a little bit in recent months, and I have a hunch that's going to continue to slow. We seem to be on the downside of this construction cycle, uh, so I'm guessing we're going to continue to see growth in construction activity, but a bit slower than we saw last year. Okay. And Kermit, does that include you know governmental work and institutional work, uh, pretty much everything? It, 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 it really focuses on non-residential activity, but okay. we do have a, a residential sub-index. Uh, that, Michael, has been extremely strong because of the strength in the, in the multifamily market. Uh, on the non-residential side, we break it down between uh, commercial, industrial, uh, sort of the private side of the market, and then institutional, sort of the nonprofit public side of the market. Uh, the commercial industrial has been, uh, you know, turned turned uh, stronger uh, uh, further ago, kind of three, three years ago, we saw that market move up. Uh, we've just seen the institutional market move up in the last uh, year and a half. Institutional would be education, healthcare, uh, government facilities. So um, it, it does break down between those two. It looks like, um, it looks like the institutional market's probably going to be a little bit stronger uh, over the coming year, uh, Michael, just because it was kind of late coming to the party, that that recovery in, in that sector didn't be, didn't begin until, as I said, about a year and a half ago. Okay, and Kermit, help us put this in perspective a little bit. This this fifty one point five that you're seeing right now, how does that compare to say pre recession times when we had the really go go construction happening? Sure. So we um, so, so this is a hundred point scale, as I said, centered around fifty. I don't think we've uh, uh, seen numbers uh, above 60 more than once or twice, one or one or two months over the 21 years we've been running this. So, you know, any score in the mid 50s is a very very strong number. Uh, any score in the mid to upper 40s would be considered a weak number. I mean, we actually saw some numbers in the 30s during the recession. We didn't think we'd ever see those numbers, but that was really uh, uh, really quite unprecedented. But um, you know, low to mid 50s, we would consider to be a very healthy uh, design market, and therefore a very healthy construction market. All right. Well, that's good news for economy and and for jobs and uh, and for commercial real estate. And so, what's hot is uh, apartments. Obviously, hot. Uh, you talked about industrial being hot. Yeah, the uh, the, the manufacturing ha is cooling off, but that was very hot. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, through 14 in the first half of uh, 2015, a lot of petrochemical stuff uh, coming online with the fluctuation we were seeing in, uh, um, in in energy costs. Hotel and office have have been surprisingly strong. Retail 
not quite as as strong, but um, looks like it may have a you know a, a bit more in terms of legs in that market too. So you know we're seeing we're seeing health in all those sectors, uh, Michael. Even though you hear a lot of stories about why those commercial markets should be should be weak, you know, on the office side, a lot of stories about telecommuting and a more shared office space, lower square footage per employee, but that doesn't seem to have affected office construction much. On the retail side, uh, a lot of stories about e-commerce and uh, less needs for brick-and-mortar uh, retail activities. And, and that market has been the slowest commercial market, but still some, some reasonably healthy numbers. And on the hotel side, a lot of talk about you know Airbnb and other sort of uh, sharing sites that we thought would cut into that. But, but so far, they've held up pretty well. So uh, you know, I, I, I think we're seeing uh, a lot of ground for optimism that the entire commercial sector uh, is going to you know, continue to be fairly healthy. Well, that's great, and we're seeing the same thing, I guess, before the the billing index uh, on selling land. Well, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll have more from Kermit Baker, Chief Economist with AIA. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty Asset and Occupancy Solutions, Excelligent Building Data Everywhere. Valuate Online Investment Analysis. First Service Solutions, your CMBS borrower advocate. Apto, the CRM for commercial brokers. You're invited to contact these companies through the show website, CREshow.com. Welcome back. I'm Michael Bull, and this is the Commercial Real Estate Show. We're talking with Kermit Baker. He's chief economist with AIA, American Institute of Architects. And Kermit, one of the things I'm curious about now is is what are the challenges in the development and the construction and design business right now? It seems like we've we've had some labor issues. Uh, what's on the mind of uh, your members today? Yeah, very much so, Michael. So you know, um, during the first. Uh, segment of, of, of this discussion, we were really talking about you know demand problems, demand for space and things like that, and the economy recovering, and uh, how could we generate more need for space? You know, I, I think that discussion has flipped over over the last 12, 18 months uh, out of the demand side and really into the supply side. When you when you talk to architects, when you talk to contractors uh, about the issues about the, the home builders, about the issues they're facing, facing they really. Uh, almost always quickly come around to supply issues. So you, so you mentioned labor, a uh, huge issue, the construction labor force, uh, about 12 million uh, workers prior to the downturn. Uh, it's down to about 10 million workers now. That That's the labor force, not the oh. folks that are uh, employed in construction. So we've lost uh, close to 20% of our potential here. And, uh, and, and so the unemployment rate um, for construction workers uh, has been uh, falling like a rock recently, and most contractors uh, you talk to uh, are their number one problem is getting uh, getting more workers, and it's exactly the same problem for architects. We lost about uh, uh, thirty thousand architecture positions, uh, wow. uh, you know, out of about a hundred, hundred and ten thousand uh, uh, nationally uh, during the downturn, and and most of those seem to have moved on to. Uh, other other professions so um they're not like with construction they're probably not coming back either so we have a uh, a major chore in terms of you know uh rebuilding the labor force both for construct design and construction uh that that's number one on the list financing certainly uh you know continues to be a problem um both on the uh you know both in terms of permanent financing as, as well as construction financing um, you, you talk to home builders, they talk about land availability as being a huge problem, developable land, uh, and, and on the commercial uh, institutional side, getting uh, good solid construction sites um, is, uh, you know, is a growing problem. I think you know, more and more folks want to be in these prime downtown locations. They don't want to be out in the burbs anymore, and uh, uh, there's just limited land availability to do that. So I think we're going to be... Um, uh, we're, we're, we're going to be coping with these supply issues really for the rest of this cycle. And Kermit, how does the construction industry feel about potential changes in immigration laws? 
Well, from what I've heard, they're, they're very concerned. I mean, construction probably second to um, uh, agriculture relies on a immigrant workforce. Uh, traditionally, about 30 percent of the construction labor force is, is immigrant labor, um, often uh, from, from Mexico, Central, and, 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 and South America. Uh, that has dried up a lot recently. I, I, I think, independent of the you know the the political rhetoric we've heard, I think just sort of normal economic forces have have, have cut back. There was a very interesting uh, article I saw recently that most states across the country, uh, the principal immigrant group uh, has has changed from a Mexican uh, to uh, Indian or, or or Chinese. So we're we're really uh, moving in different directions in terms of immigration policy, um, and and that does. Have have uh, tremendous implications for the for the construction industry, like like I say, probably more so than than almost any other industry. Yeah, and I guess uh, if there are changes in immigration, uh, and then you already have a labor shortage, it could mean uh, even more challenge with costs, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. no, I think that. Uh, uh, that that is one of the quickest ways I think to help solve the the labor problem is to is, is to in, in increase the immigrant uh, um, workforce. So, secondly, it's um, you know to to really start these training and apprenticeship programs that were shut down during the downturn. Uh, third, I think is um, and, and and not probably not number three on the list, but number three I'm going to talk about is that. Uh, the construction labor force has really not relied much on women. I think uh, women only make up two or three percent of the construction labor force. If we could get that up to ten, fifteen, twenty percent, that would that would really uh, uh, open up a, a, a tremendous un, untapped source of new labor for this industry. Yeah, that'd be great. I wish I could get my wife to do the repairs around my house. If, if you can I, I help won't me go out there, there, Michael. <laughs> what about uh, design trends? What do you see interesting there, Kermit? Yeah, well, we we um, we, we recently, uh, Michael at, at the AIA just did a major survey of uh, clients of architects. So these would be developers and uh, building owners, and we asked them what types of you know attributes they'd like to see in projects that they're going to be working on over the next uh, next few years. So we gave them a long list of things to think about and, and ask whether those are really important to the projects they have or 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 not so important um, and like I say it's a long list I'm not going to I'm not going to run through it all but but they, they sort of group into cluster into three major categories and the first is you know I, I think one that we've seen a lot of but continues to be strong and that that's an area I, I, I think I'd categorize as sustainable design so this is this is things like having um, energy efficient systems in their buildings uh, healthy buildings um, y- you know has become a very very hot topic uh, water conservation as a feature in their buildings more recently renewable energy uh, resilient uh, design is a term that uh, buzzword we've heard a lot more over the over the over the last year or two uh, all those I think are, are, are rating very high in the sustainable design category second category is um, uh, you're really dealing with more flexibility to meet uh, the occupant needs. I think as businesses change, uh, as they uh, as, as they look to use their space differently, they want a lot of uh, a lot more flexibility. Okay, well, Kermit, thanks for joining us today. We appreciate you being on the show, and stay tuned. We'll have more on development. This is the Commercial Real Estate Show. Hey there, thanks for checking out the Commercial Real Estate Show. Don't miss a video of special interest to you. Be sure to subscribe below. And if you appreciate the videos, be sure and thank our sponsors. There's a link to more information about them in the description. For more videos, podcasts, and articles, check out CREshow.com.